Before we begin, as defined by the dictionary, immersion is the act of dipping something into a substance, completely covering it. Why do I bring that up? Well, just remember it because we're going to swing back to it at the end of this. What's more fun than grabbing two axes and chopping somebody's head off and then beating them to death with a shield? I do not know, but it looks to be incredibly enjoyable. I got to spend four hours with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and do pretty much just that. I'm going to tell you my impressions. And these impressions are based on four solid hours of playing the game nonstop, as well as from my own home. This was not something that we went to. This was something that they used Parsec to beam it directly into us. So it's not necessarily a hands-on. It's like a hands-medium kind of thing. And you guys know how it is. I say exactly what I think, positive or negative, and Ubisoft is well aware of that. So we got to play it. A bunch of different YouTubers did. These are my impressions. The first thing you do is you choose your male or female Viking. What I chose was Eivor. He's the male. It's the same name for both, but basically I chose the male character. He is voice acted by Magnus Brun from Kingdom, who plays Knut. And I love him in Kingdom. So I decided, you know what? I'll pick him. I talked to a couple other people now who thought maybe he was a little bit soft voiced for this uh, particular character. But I actually think that adds a little bit more gravitas between some of the respite moments, some of the downtrodden moments, and some of the action bits. Now, when we jumped in, understanding that what I was seeing was streamed through Parsec, there was not a lot of latency. That was fine but there was a downgrading of the graphics. So what you see here, this is what it actually looked like. Mine actually did look significantly worse, but I thought that there were some things that I personally noticed that I liked. One being the lighting, even on overcast days. Now I've talked about this before with graphics. The lighting on overcast days is quite difficult to do. You can get a really flat look to almost everything in your game world. But this was a mix of Origins and Odyssey both, and I think it did a very good job highlighting some of the lighting itself. The first thing you do is you start out in this mission raising iron. Now, as you guys will see, I'm going to look around because this is me. This is the first time I've played this game. So I'm just going to sort of discuss what I was thinking and feeling as I, as I played this. One of the very noticeable elements of Valhalla is that it will remind you at times of Witcher 3. Now, take that as you will. They're both different styles of game, of course. But Valhalla does many times feel a bit like Witcher. It does also, though, feel strictly like an Assassin's Creed game. You're not going to play this and go, this is Witcher. It moves differently. It certainly moves speedier than Witcher does, even after Witcher's gameplay patch that they had when it first released. But there is a lot that I actually liked here, including, I feel, one of the more detailed terrain systems and just world systems. A lot like Witcher 3. You'll have some comparisons there, but that'll be up to you. Now, when it comes to Assassin's Creed games, the first thing, as you can see, I wanted to test was stealth and assassinations. He is very stealthy for a Viking. I messed this up because, I, well, I just didn't know which button was doing what because some of the combat is switched. So I sort of messed this one up. Now, when we look at the combat, you can see on the right and on the left, you have the right trigger and left trigger icons, as well as four buttons. That is your eight powers, your eight basic large abilities. The ability to, let's say, jump up in the air and smash somebody with a spear. The ability to throw axes, that kind of stuff. I have to say this, and this is just my opinion. I wasn't necessarily in love with a lot of these. They didn't really feel as, this is going to sound weird, as Viking as I wanted them to be. They sort of just felt... Not necessarily like copies of Origins or Odyssey or Syndicate or any game prior that had any special skills of any kind or at the end of a combo. It just felt a little bit off. They didn't really sort of highlight exactly the power that this character has. Now, you can pick up different weapons, and I picked up a giant axe. And I got to tell you, the giant axe, once you get that, you do feel properly like a Viking. And let's talk about the combat and what some of those changes are. So you have those different skills, which I'll show you in a bit. But just world traversal overall felt pretty good. It felt as smooth as I think I was expecting, much like Odyssey or Origins. It, you know, Origins, I definitely like the world view and the way it offered that fantastic world of Egypt. But control-wise, it did have some issues, and I felt that Odyssey actually improved on a great deal of those. And what we see with this is about the same thing. I have heard people say that he looks a little light or feels a little light for as weighty as a Viking would be with all of that extra stuff. And this could easily be transposed into Bayek or into Alexios in Origins or Odyssey, respectively. Because really, when you look at all of them, they would have quads like friggin' kegs anyway, but they never do. 
Now here you can see your longboat. There's various different boats that you can call and you can call them for raids along any of the smaller towns and you can also sail them to different places in the game. There is boat combat. I didn't do any, but you can call them. Now, one of the things I noticed in here was fishing and I tried to do that. There was somebody who's always watching you who can answer your questions when you're doing a test like this. They were there, they were recording the footage and they were there, you know, if you had a question about how to do something. I didn't ask them how to do this, whether they were watching and just like this dude does not know how to fish. I don't know. I just tried to trigger it and I couldn't right there. But it is one more thing on the side that you can possibly do. I don't necessarily know how that's going to add any longevity to the game. It's probably just a side mission. Nothing popped up when I tried to do it, indicating something like this with the abilities. Now, you'll see the cloak here. The cloak here is a social disguise. This is a little bit like Hitman and a little bit like some of the other parts that we've seen in all the Assassin's Creed games. Here, you put that cloak on and you can go into enemy locations and locations where people would instantly attack you or instantly see you, but they don't as long as you have that cloak on. Now, the more you act weird or the more you bump it into each other or the more you do anything crazy, the more of a chance that they will see you. When it comes to presentation, I noticed this cinematic camera. I really like this. You know, I don't remember this being in uh, Odyssey at all. I could be wrong, but it does have a nice cinematic camera where you can actually see yourself riding. And then we're going to go in. Now you guys are going to see this is the first little quest area that I get. I was looking at all the characters trying to see how the world building is because you guys know me. If I'm going to do a walk in the walk, this is the kind of stuff I would be looking for. There are some issues. This is stuff that they warned us about prior. So you will see bug pathing errors with some of the actual NPCs. That kind of stuff, again, was completely expected. Now let's talk about sound for a bit and listen. Ruid's clan is your enemy, not me. I come on behalf of the late Oswald of Elmenham. Still a Dane from top to two. It's your meddling that led to Oswald's death, leaving our kingdom for the worse. East Anglia will fall if Ruid's clan is not defeated. Fight with me to drive them off for Oswald and your kinsmen. Pretty words, Dane. But the men of Theovard have their own battles to fight. Now, there are a couple reasons why I really like this. I feel that Magnus does a pretty good job at being a character who isn't necessarily completely overt and completely loud all the time. That is actually not what's going on here. They are not invading this area and killing everybody. It's not about war. It's actually about him putting together a homestead for himself, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You actually have a change to the settlement system that occurs here with this character. But I like how he dealt his different lines. I will also say that processing when you listen to it they did a very good job making sure that the processing was accurate for voices outside this is one of the things that you will notice i'm sorry if you can see my volume adjuster there i adjusted it while the game was playing this is something you'll notice in a lot of games where the processing doesn't really work it doesn't sound like somebody's actually in a location it doesn't sound like a character's in the rain it doesn't sound like they're in the snow we get games like red dead 2 and we certainly get some other games that are coming out or out like last of us where this is also handled very well, but some games we don't. It's handled good here. I think everybody feels solidified in their environment, which I think is vital, very important. Now, next up, we're going to jump into the skills. So you can see again, left trigger, right trigger. There's a couple things that I thought were okay here. I don't mind the skills at all. You had things like multiple, there you go, mark of death, where you have multiple arrows. You can rain down volleys. You've got your Spartan kick on your right, as well as throwing double axes. Now, a lot of people may say, oh, this is something that occurred in, let's say, Odyssey. Well, remember that many of the games have had double weapon special attacks of some kind or have had at least an animation that looks alike. So it's not necessarily unique that we're seeing these. We have also unlocked a couple of these. You can see some open spaces there that I have because they gave us some of these and I unlocked three or four as I was playing the game. So you certainly do get them. You do have the ability to poison weapons as well. So Yes, there are some similarities here for sure with the prior games. Again, I sort of expected that. Now, when it comes to the skill points, I'm just going to be honest. I was not a fan of any of this. I wasn't a fan of the way the constellations look or how this is set up. As a person who likes skill systems and to look, I think these are set way too far from each other. And it's confusing to know where you're supposed to spin the point. Like, what are all the dots for? And for as much as I can tell, and when I asked... These skills are really that far set away in the HUD, which sounds weird, but when you want to jump into a HUD and make a quick choice, that seems odd. And time to jump to the longboat call. So you can blow the horn to do two things. Call your longboat or 
perform a raid on a fort. We'll do the long ship first. I called it a long boat. You go to the stern here, you jump in. This is all the stuff that I think we all normally expect. You can, and there are various different waterways, by the way, but you can travel all over the land in this boat and move around. I thought this was well done. Once again, Assassin's Creed, I think, especially when you look at a lot of games, does water pretty well. We see a lot of games where they just don't handle the ability of that water to feel like it's moving around a ship or a boat. When this originally popped up, especially I think one of the best times was in Origins and then in Odyssey, I think here it does perfect. It feels like you're actually a boat in water. There's something very cool. Of course, you have your spray, your current gen spray. We're not at the next generation moment for particles. I like all this kind of stuff, and I get that the feeling of traveling is supposed to be in there. It certainly is. Now, you see these guys move around, and they're arming themselves. That's because we got near an enemy fort, and I'm just going to jump out here because I couldn't figure out a place where I needed to park. I was felt like I was stressed for time, even though I wasn't. Let's talk about movement for a bit. It does feel far closer to an assassin than it does a Viking. I'll just say that. He is quick. He's mobile. He moves more like he's got some Viking clothing on, but that he's been trained in that way than actually as a Viking. And this is something that we sort of see in some of the battles. I don't necessarily know how this is going to end up transposing onto the full game. It's just something I noticed here. He's just a little bit slicker than I thought, a little bit quicker. And I would like to see that slightly slowed down. You can still be an assassin, but I would like to see it a little bit slower so that it feels you can feel that force. Now in a bit here, you're going to see me make a brutal mistake I wasn't preparing for. Just like all these games, you can call your horse. You can put your fingers in your mouth, give that whistle, and boom, your horse shows up. Just like, you know, most horses don't do. But you also, if you hit the other button, use your horn to start a raid. Woo. Yep, that did not go as planned. But this will be a good point to listen to some of the sounds. One of the things you will hear a lot when you're in this game is sword on board kind of sounds. You'll hear a lot of what sounds like a bunch of people just karate chopping two by fours. That is what a blade on a shield sounds like. You hear that rattle of the metal around the shield. All of that really well done. I will say animations wise, there was some jankiness here. They did say a lot of these were not completed animations. I think that that completely makes sense for where it is. There were some issues with the fluidity between animations, especially in some parts where you pull off a special move and there's this jankiness that is missing in other Assassin's Creed games. I think that makes perfect sense. This is a beta. That's the way it's going to be. And speaking of that, people may think that, oh man, it doesn't sound like he likes this. There was a lot to like. I just want to make sure that people's ideas are solidified that this is a sequel. It's not some magical new thing. It's not an airplane simulator. It's a sequel to a game in an established series. And just as Origins and Odyssey didn't actually shake up the entire world, they made some changes, but it's not like they're magically, holistically different from the games prior nor is Valhalla. And I think that the expectation there should be that what you are getting is a game that's within that series of new sequels, your Origins and your Odyssey, and now your Valhalla. That's just the way it is. If you don't like that, I would say that what I played, nothing really made me feel like, oh, this was magically going to change. I did like how raids have changed. You basically raid the place, then you fight the boss, you get this location, and later on you actually get a home or a, a settlement of your own, and you will upgrade it. A lot like Primal, where you upgraded locations in Primal. Remember, Primal started with, I think it was two huts, and a dude banging on a rock, and pretty soon you've got your little own village metropolis going on kind of thing there. That's the way this game plays out as well. This is about reflecting that the strength really is within the people themselves in Valhalla. And that's what the game actually played out as in my four hours. You started to really sort of understand it was much more about leadership and gathering people together than the prior Assassin's Creed games, which again, may not fit exactly what people expect, but I liked it. Another thing I really enjoyed was Jesper Kidd and Sarah Shackner's composing in this. Now, a lot of the music 
is definitely Viking inspired, but there were some down times. There were some times where I was exploring and just riding the horse. Very well done. They've joined together. It's going to be really interesting to see how all this comes together because a lot of games don't have two full composers like that. They'll have a main composer, maybe a sub composer, that kind of thing. And there's just a different setup. This is one of those setups I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to see both their names, even though both of them, of course, are famous for really good soundtracks from this series. So to have them come together, I am excited to see how all of this can end up joining up and how these two can combine into a musical Voltron, because to me, that is the way it should be. I'm super excited for the music more than maybe a lot of the other parts. But I do want to talk about that little immersion thing. Because to me, I feel that one of the problems that's going to crop up in this previews comments, by the way, if you like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to me. I would love it. I feel that people are going to say something along the lines of it felt like a or looks like a Odyssey skin, right? It looks like a mod for Odyssey. It looks like a blah, 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 which is, by the way, what a lot of people said about Odyssey. It looks like a Rome or Greek skin for Origins. The reason why this is, and something I want to point out as not a negative or a positive, but something that does bother me as well, so I get where you're coming from. The sense of immersion is to actually holistically jump in, wholly jump in, actually, to, to really immerse yourself, get in there above your head. The problem with the Assassin's Creed games is that their iconography, their font choices, their very presentation is identical between. And I don't mean graphically with the characters because those are completely different worlds. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the HUD. I'm talking about your intersection and your interaction with the game world. Look, at, that's the same HUD we've seen so many times, right? Now, people might say, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, they, they don't need to change the HUD. It's the Animus. I disagree. I feel that Vikings and the Viking background is a perfect time for them to take some chances. We still see it where you run up to a character in this game and they've got a little thought bubble which indicates that they want to talk. Why was that not a tapestry over their head to where you knew that it felt Viking, right? Those little things are what allow you to be immersed. Now, other games can do this that don't have the Assassin's Creed moniker. The reason why? Because there isn't the expectation where everything will have some seamless bit that connects them. There are other ways that they can connect them, and it doesn't always have to be the HUD's font choice being identical. That's what we get with these games, and that's why you get people complaining that they do feel like a skin. Now, graphically, I think we see a lot of games. Many shooters can look somewhat alike. You get your Battlefield and your Call of Duty, and people will be like, oh, it's, you know, they're both M4s that this person's shooting. Whatever. I get that. But I do believe that to immerse means from the screen inward, and that is one place where. Ubisoft has just not felt comfortable going. They have not felt comfortable changing up the presentation. I don't have an issue with the narrative. I don't know if you guys remember, but they said that they were changing their narrative team here recently and sort of switching it up. I don't actually have a problem with their narrative. I have a problem many times with how it's presented like for like across different titles. And at some point, right? At some point, if you're changing everything else, Maybe reach out and try to see what else you can do. Everything here just looks very similar. And I think that that will cause people to have issues. Me personally, nah. I had a good time playing it. And when I review it, if I have a good time, I'll tell you that. But I certainly do see why people bring that up. So anyway, that's it for me. I've talked about music and sound and voice and gameplay and graphics and it looks to have a lot of different stuff you can do. There was a lot of activities, and I did enjoy the landscape. I had a great time riding the horse around. It looks to be a place that I'll want to explore. We've had different people from Ubisoft saying that the game was smaller than prior games, and then later they retracted that and said, actually, no, it's bigger. We won't know until we play it, right? And what does bigger mean if it's not enjoyable? It could be about the depth that you can get into the systems, about the settlements and raising those things and about getting new skills because these aren't the only skills. All of that stuff could certainly build on it. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, a thumbs down if you didn't. You can always check me out on Twitter and Twitch and all those places. And of course, become a patron at the Patreon website. Hey, I buy a copy of every single game I review. I do it all the time, give you guys my honest ideas on how much this game is worth or that game is worth based on my hard-earned cash being on the line just like yours. If you want to jump by Patron, maybe help out. It would help out too because YouTube views pay for shit.
Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.